In December 2019, a young doctor working in Wuhan Central Hospital noticed something strange going on with his patients. Their coughing and fevers weren't just the normal flu. They were reminiscent of a deadly coronavirus outbreak that burst out of China almost 20 years earlier. Dr. Li Wenliang quickly sent a message to his fellow medics warning them to wear protective clothing. Within four days, he was detained along with his colleagues and accused of deliberately spreading dangerous and false rumors. A month later, he was dead, killed by the new coronavirus that was permeating throughout Wuhan's 11 million people. Three months after Li's warnings, this new and deadly illness has killed thousands, put millions of vulnerable people at risk, and brought the global economy to a screeching halt. But Dr. Li's death had started the spread of another outbreak among the Chinese people. The idea that their government had failed them. Amongst the many criticisms were references to another disaster that unfolded in 1986 in the city of Chernobyl. So why is it that a Soviet-era nuclear catastrophe has struck a chord with the quarantined people of communist China? There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union and the Soviet... An explosion at a nuclear plant in the Soviet Union. The accident was at Chernobyl. Saw the galloping rise of SAR, severe acute respiratory syndrome. The killer bug is now striking the front line of defence. A bit of breaking news to bring you, which is... A further 15, uh, 14 deaths, forgive me, since yesterday. That COVID-19 can be characterised as a pandemic. I'm Matthew Henderson. I worked on China as a British diplomat for most of my life. The Chinese Communist Party doesn't like people talking history and politics on social media. The party doesn't want debate about its colourful past. The up to 30 million Chinese citizens who starved to death 60 years ago under Chairman Mao, or the youngsters shot or mown down in Tiananmen Square in 1989. The current leadership is powerful and all the more intent on suppressing the slightest sign of dissent. So why did the Chernobyl disaster suddenly capture popular imagination and encourage the victims of the COVID-19 outbreak to start speaking truth to power? I'm pleased to report that the situation in Chernobyl is stable. In terms of radiation, I'm told it's the equivalent of a chest X-ray. No, Chernobyl is on fire. Chernobyl, 1986. The former Soviet Union is playing host to the world's worst ever nuclear disaster. A delicate safety test was needed at Chernobyl Reactor 4, but the crew on duty didn't know what they were doing or how to save the situation when the reactor ran out of control and exploded. The ensuing meltdown released 400 times more radiation than both the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs put together and blew a gaping hole in the Soviet Union's carefully constructed propaganda wall behind which lay a state just five years away from total collapse. Their secrecy, lack of initiative, inertia, and fear of blame from within their own system made matters a great deal worse. They delayed issuing warnings, underplayed risks, failed to protect workers and evacuate residents, and at every step betrayed the trust that government leaders must command among their people in times of disaster. The firemen sent to try to extinguish the massive blaze had no protective clothing. Pilots of helicopters used to drop sand on the site received dangerous doses of radiation. The reactor crew chief and his team on duty that night had no way to measure the lethal levels of radiation and worked on regardless. Most had died from radiation sickness three weeks later. The residents of nearby Pripyat, now an abandoned ghost town, were evacuated only after they had been exposed to intense radiation. And the Ukraine government went ahead with the annual May Day parade in nearby Kyiv despite winds from the north that blew the radioactive plume from the burning reactor core right over the city. The immediate cost of the clean-up operation, around 27 billion pounds in today's money, nearly bankrupted the Soviet Union. The spotlight on communist incompetence and ruthless contempt for public safety energized Gorbachev's new policy of glasnost, openness and free speech. This was the trigger for wider changes that in less than five years brought about the collapse of the entire Soviet empire. In Gorbachev's own words, the Chernobyl disaster was the turning point, which meant that the system as we knew it could no longer continue. So how does the situation in China look in comparison? For many years, researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology have been studying the link between viruses found in bats and human infection by SARS-type viruses. In 2017, they published a study indicating that the SARS outbreak in 2002 
possibly came from a population of bats in southwest China. They warned that another deadly outbreak could emerge at any time. Lo and behold, the first case of the new SARS variant, COVID-19, was registered in Wuhan around the 1st of December 2019. Unreported to the public, the number of cases rapidly rose to more than 400. Evidence for person-to-person -person transmission, vital to planning a control operation, was apparently observed in mid-December but not reported as such. The disease was spreading as Dr. Li Wenliang alerted his colleagues to his patients' worrying symptoms. His subsequent death from COVID-19 was denied and hushed up. But when the truth did come out, a tide of public anger and grief sparked one of the most powerful online protests in China for years. There were demands for free speech and an independent judiciary, famously described in one message as the only things that can keep us safe. But neither exists in China. As these voices of protest were briefly heard, for a few days Chernobyl became a code word for discussing the Chinese state's systematic failure to handle the virus. The disease was spreading fast. By the time the authorities admitted that they had a problem, five million people had left the Wuhan area for the New Year holidays, leading to the international crisis now facing the world. Wuhan officials allowed the celebrations to continue 40,000 dinner guests met on the evening of the 19th of January alone. On the 23rd of January, the city was in lockdown, but the damage was already done. To make matters worse, over 3,000 medical staff in China had contracted the virus due to inadequate protection. To this day, the World Health Organization has not been informed of their current status. Terrified local officials dared not take preventive measures because they didn't know what Xi Jinping wanted and were afraid of getting into trouble. This fatal paralysis led to the spread of coronavirus worldwide and has the potential to kill thousands more, all because of an autocratic regime in Beijing. It is beyond doubt that if better sanitary precautions had been introduced in December, the world would not now be facing an incalculably expensive, destabilizing and deadly pandemic. Local officials, including the mayor of Wuhan, have admitted that huge mistakes were made at this crucial early stage. High-level judicial bodies have attempted to apologise for the detention of Dr. Lee and the failure to publicise his warning. However, this is not the tone adopted by China's senior leadership, who continue to churn out propaganda about how well they managed the outbreak from the start. These misleading claims have unfortunately been repeated by the World Health Organization. And in a clear indication of the moral compass of the regime, a new social media campaign is flourishing increasingly supported by official statements, pretending that neither the outbreak nor the COVID-19 virus itself originated in China. So, could Wuhan turn out to be China's Chernobyl? It is too soon to tell. The Chinese Communist Party is richer and stronger than the Soviet Communists ever were. Though Xi and his team seem acutely sensitive to public criticism, with the help of Orwellian digital surveillance capabilities, their security services are well able to detect and silence serious dissent within hours. But there may just be an alternative vision out there, closer to what a modern liberal Chinese leadership would offer their suffering people. On the 21st of January, before the quarantine gates slammed shut, an extraordinary statement emerged from the top of China's legal bureaucracy. Self-deception will only make the epidemic worse and turn a natural disaster into a man-made disaster. That is the lesson of Chernobyl. The Chinese Communist Party has utterly ignored it. And the whole world is already paying that great cost.